I speak these words in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Today's Gospel reading reminds us of the significance of turning back to say thank you. It also assures us that one need not be born of the right parents in order to have access to God through Christ. Nationality matters not. Social status matters not. Religious status matters not. For this one who turned back was a Samaritan. What matters in the spiritual life is the ability to recognize a blessing. The faith to see who gave you that blessing and the gratitude and duty to turn back and say thank you. Yesterday, the Hill family went to the zoo in Boston. And we managed to avoid the gift shop. <laughs> Big win. Just as we started to load into the van, we had a flat tire. But we would not be denied, and so we crammed into the Subaru Crosstrek, all five of us, and we made the trek down to Boston to the zoo. It was the first all-day city trip for our family since before the pandemic started. We had a blast, most of them, but it was also a bit of a melancholy experience for me because it just underscored how much we missed out on as a family for the last two and a half years. How many memories were not made? How many experiences we hadn't had together. And that brought up the spectrum of my emotions about what it means to have been parenting through all of this and about the fragmentation and the fragility of our society. I recounted in my mind the occasions during which we'd made a plan but we had to cancel it because of sickness or illness or COVID exposure or fear of COVID exposure. Birthday parties, Christmas with our families, dinners out, trips to the city, Disappointment after disappointment. And then I think about what the Bible describes of the experience of the Babylonian exile. The generational displacement. The hardship of being forced to live somewhere other than your home. And in that context, Today's reading from Jeremiah always breaks my heart a little bit. This is his letter to the exiles. He says to them, you're not coming home anytime soon. So get used to Babylon. Get used to it. Plant gardens. Take husbands and wives. Have grandchildren there. Assimilate. And as my mind has been thinking about uh, our observance in the state of Maine tomorrow of Indigenous Peoples Day, my mind goes directly to the Trail of Tears. And I just wonder if there is enough shared experience of displacement and trauma 
in the history of Israel and in the history of indigenous peoples on this continent. For Christians to have any role in something that would lead to healing, some vision of brotherhood that might forge a common future of mutuality and respect and working together to love and steward the land. When I think about those sufferings, my flat tire takes a bit of a different perspective. I said to my family on the way down yesterday that when I was younger, I just could come and go however I pleased. I lived in the moment, I went with the flow, and nowadays I've got so much going on that if I want to do anything that involves time, it, involved, it, it requires a major effort to plan ahead. A major effort to plan ahead. And in the past couple of years, it feels like most of the things I've planned have been canceled. So what I've learned is that when things do actually work out, it's a really big deal. When your parents come and visit you, that's a big deal. And when you get to go to a, an organ concert and hear amazing musicianship and take joy in the fact that we're gathered together to celebrate music and creativity and life, that's a big deal. When you get to go to a birthday party, or when you get to go out to eat at a restaurant, that's a big deal. And so I realized going to the zoo was a big deal. And that when we do those things that work out for us, we have a choice. We can either take it for granted and move on, or we can recognize it for the blessing that it is. And we can turn back and we can give thanks the way the Samaritan did. Give thanks to God for the people who shared the blessing with us. Give thanks and praise to God for every good gift and for bringing us to the awareness of our blessings. I think there's something fundamental to our humanity about showing gratitude and thankfulness. It makes us the best of who we are and who we can be. If you study the history of religions, for instance, ancient ritual and myth across cultures is universally grounded in expressing gratitude for the rain, for the harvest, for fertility, for safety. And now, in our modern ways of knowing, we now know that gratitude is linked psychologically to happiness. There's a lot that's being uncovered about happiness. There is a class at Yale with a thousand people in it every semester called happiness. It's something that we yearn for and something that we long to understand. And of course, I'm using it interchangeably with the idea of inner peace and joy, something, some deep contentment, not just a circumstantial happiness. One of the things we're learning is that happy people, joyful people, grounded and peaceful people, have a regular practice of extending gratitude. So if you want to improve your mood today, maybe you should make a list of people to thank and pick up the phone and give them a call. Maybe our days would go differently even if we just did that for one person. How might it change our day if we called one person today just to say thank you and for no other reason? And I wonder if this happiness, this joy, 
isn't born of the knowledge that our well-being, your well-being and mine, isn't yoked together in the well-being of others. Or that it is really God who makes us happy because it is love that makes us happy. Love, that stuff of our shared affection, the glue of our mutuality, love, the active ingredient in our being made in the image and likeness of God, the fuel in our tank. Turning back to give thanks is about sharing love. And sharing love is what our lives are all about. So that question rests in my mind. I wonder who we need to thank, back, turn back and thank as a community. Who do we need to turn back and thank as a nation? And who do we as individuals need to turn back and thank? Who is it who deserves a share of our joy? Maybe a parent or a teacher or a mentor or a co-worker or a sibling or a friend. Who deserves a share of your joy? You may not know this, but it is the practice of this parish's vestry at the very end of every vestry meeting to stop and ask the question, who should we thank? And then, after some discussion, the vestry delegates out and writes handwritten thank you notes to the people who've made extraordinary contributions of their time and devotion, in one way or another, to the life of our community. Looking around, many of you I know have received such notes, and many of you have written them. Thank you for writing them. Because turning back to say thank you is about sharing love. And sharing love is what life is all about. So last night after the zoo, we stopped in for dinner with two of my friends from seminary, who I haven't seen in 13 years. They just moved to Boston, the Boston area, with their two kids. And being with them together and remembering what we went through together was really wonderful. To be in a different phase of life and ministry with them, to introduce our children to one another and connect and, and have this deep sense of collegiality and openness, it was wonderful. And it was a big deal. And I'm reminded of how I started this. I said, what matters in the spiritual life is the ability to recognize a blessing. To have the faith to see who gave you that blessing. And the gratitude and duty to turn back and say, thank you. My friends, God is active in our lives. God is active in giving us to one another. And the gift of love that we share is meant to be shared freely and joyfully. So who are the people God has put in your life? How have they made you whole? And how are you going to turn back? say thank